when I went back and looked at the earlier literature, there is a blizzard of popular literature of reporters putting putting what some people think are facts, and it's actually the uh, product of a, a deadline and a telephone conversation and maybe a couple of beers. But it's really hard to sort out the popular literature of what the hard science looks like. Who processed these samples? How did they get the nano diamonds out? Not just anybody can do that. It takes a pretty skilled operator to find these things and, and to identify them. And Ted down there is volunteering to, or confessing. <laughs> uh, and I haven't had a really good time, uh, chance to sit down with him with, and, and see just how all of this stuff was done. Um, I've sort of, I won't say vented my spleen here, but <laughs> my, uh, my experience is in verifying terrestrial impact craters in hard rock. So I'm in a little soft territory for me. And I'd, uh, I think we'll pass this on and see if we can't start some, some good fights. <laughs> that, that's our hope, and that's why I'm sitting here in the middle between these two. <laughs> I may need some help. So uh, I, I think I'll just pass the, the uh, discussion back over here and see if we can get some replies to what's just been said. Yeah, first thing, I, I'm, I'm really puzzled. Obviously, they mention regular impacts, and, and all three of them say they're very familiar with hard impacts. And when a big object slams into the earth, it produces shocked cores, melted rock, lots of things, the, the proxies that we know, including a crater. They are faulting us for not having the three of those, and yet all three of them will admit that Tunguska is an, is an ET event, is an impact. There is no crater, no shock quartz at Tunguska, there is no melt products at all. So on the one hand, they fault us for not having a crater and all of those things when they admit that Tunguska is an impact. So that seems kind of odd to me. What we're talking about is a non-traditional kind of event. Tunguska was a non-traditional impact, left no crater, no shock quartz, but yet it did produce magnetic spherules, they're all over the place, they did find some iridium, they did claim to find diamonds, and yet it never hit the ground. In fact, Mark has modeled exactly what happened at Tunguska, so he well knows there is no crater, there is no shock quartz, and all of these other things, so that's a real puzzle to me. Uh, the other thing he says, curiously enough, is that because this happened 10,000 years ago, it could not be an event which would take 10 million. But I don't know if any of you have been to Las Vegas. Well, <laughs> good laughter, huh? Well, you know that your chances of drawing four aces out of a single deck are the same every time that deck comes up. If you take any 10 million year span, the odds of having an impact on a given day are exactly the same every day for that 10 million years. So the fact that 10,000 years have passed means nothing. What if the last impact was 50,000 years ago, 65,000? Then it's actually fewer impacts than there should be. So you can't argue this statistically because you can have one impact one day after the other and still have it be statistically accurate. So you can't say just because it's 10,000, it's too young. But, but the main thing, I think, is that, it, is that most of this argument happens about what was this thing. This was not a classical impact. It did not hit the ground. At least we haven't found the crater. We haven't found shocked rocks. But for those of you that there were last night, we lined up 14 different markers. The YD event has more markers that match the KT, magnetic spherules, iridium, fullerenes, diamonds, they're found in the KT too, and they're also not found above the KT or below it, and they're the same nano diamonds that we found, exactly. And this was used, and, and to answer one of the questions, this was found using classical, the gold standard of detecting diamonds. The samples were put through 150 steps of acid dissolution, various acids one after another, to get rid of everything that was not diamond. They were looked at with a TEM, which produces diffraction patterns, which is as unique as your fingerprint. Each one of you has a different fingerprint. Diamond has a different fingerprint than quartz. There's just no mistaking what it is. We've looked for these nano diamonds above the YDB layer and below it, and they're not there. So there is no background for these things. They just don't exist at these sites. And we have looked. And they exist in massive quantities right in this very thin couple centimeter layer that's right at the base of the black map. And by the way, the same diamonds, including Lonsdale Light, are reported at Tunguska. 
So here we have an event with none of the classical markers for an impact, and yet there are diamonds there too. So, so you know, I think the, the whole shift has to be away from classical impact markers. We agree, this did not hit the ground, this did not leave a big crater, but it leaves the same markers that Tunguska had, which all three of them will admit was an impact. It just hit the air instead of the earth. Uh, all three of the uh, speakers to the left-hand side of the table have come up with one single uh, agreement that in the YDB, at the boundary where we find the diamonds and so on, we do not find shock course or classical uh, indicators of, sh of shock characteristics. Now, I'm older than dirt, and I, when uh, Gene Shoemaker and Ed Chow I did the first diagnostic uh, test on Meteor Crater to prove it was a crater. I was a graduate student at that time, and my mentor had a NASA grant, so I spent uh, my PhD years uh, developing shock criteria. So I'm not necessarily ignorant of uh, the various structures that we see in shock minerals, but there are craters and craters that were you can't, if there aren't, there isn't quartz or there isn't something else. You don't have all the remarkable shock indicators uh, necessarily in one event. I might add that the comparison of diamonds, nano diamonds, in the YDB and the KT, Cretaceous tertiary boundary has nano diamonds also. It has shock diamonds. Not above, not below, but in the very thin layer as we see them uh, in uh, the uh, YDB. So there is a nice an analogy there, that we have the diamonds, and we don't have shock quartz. I worked with the um, Alvarez group in Berkeley uh, as part of their project team for 10 years, collecting materials and looking at the various sites as they were developing their theory uh, before, during, and after the Chief Salute. Uh, of the 168 sites, as I recall at the time, these are from ocean cores from around uh, the northern hemisphere, 34% of the KT boundary did not have shock indicators. It was loaded with uh, fullerenes, loaded with soot, loaded with uh, iridium, but did not have shock indicators. When an asteroid, an impactor, makes a crater in the Earth, you have various layers of rock that uh, is part of the target. Some of that material, at the top material, be totally vaporized, blown away, the next huge layer down, like uh, at the Chicxulub crater, which was gypsum, uh, 1,500 uh, feet of gypsum, that will vaporize. There's no quartz in gypsum. So it depends on the target material, the distribution of the ejecta as it comes out and is distributed globally. Now, I'm not saying we expect to find quartz uh, at the uh, YDB, because I don't think we made a crater. <laughs> It may have penetrated, as Carolyn says, uh, a big hole in the ice in Canada and may have scorched the underlying material, uh, burning a lot of material, maybe partially make, making the carbon spirals. I don't know. But the fact remains that we have shock diamonds, we have diamonds, we have a lot of them, and we have melted carbon. Something happened, uh, and we point to a shock event. We don't know the mechanism. That's what we're all working on, and I hope my colleagues on the left-hand side, the Sarasol side of the table, uh, will help us in the f a future uh, and help develop um, uh, this to a more fulfilling end. We have hyperballistic experimental people on board to do, and I, I want to either get Mark or his colleague David Crawford uh, to help us out here in, in some way. We'll work one against the other on that one. Uh, maybe a couple other comments here. Um, Mark said, well, statistically, this can only happen one every 10 million years. And we had trouble with the NEO people when our uh, hypothesis first came out, the near-Earth orbit people that keep track of and try to find potential hazardous comets and and asteroids, and my old uh, boss at NASA, David Morrison, who's uh, big in the NEO.